Okay, so now let's see how we can use ideas from principal component analysis to implement dimensionality reduction in a computational way. Okay, so summarizing what PCA can do, it's essentially a very important dimensionality reduction techniques. Okay, and it's commonly used in data science and machine learning. And again, you know, that's why we are you know, probably teaching it, but it's essentially based upon matrix operations and so on. So this is also an important part of this, this lecture series. Okay, now if the data has some statistical distribution, it helps you to uncover the low dimensional patterns from the large data. And that's one of the key features of principal component analysis. And PCA essentially provides us the hierarchical coordinate systems based on the data. And if you recall what we discussed, U so axis was the important axis and V axis was not important. So there is a hierarchical information in which coordinate is more important in representing the data. PCA has that vibe and it's essentially encapsulate this hierarchical coordinate system, right? Where the important axes are represented first than the not so important ones and so on. Essentially a coordinate system based in terms of direction in which the data captures the maximum amount of variance. You saw that the U axis in the previous example, you know, captures the maximum variance in the data. And that's essentially the most important thing that probably we want to capture. And hopefully we can use that information to reduce dimensionality in the overall data that we might have. Yep. Now PCA could be enabled through support vector decomposition. And this is why we discussed previously what is support vector decomposition. And we will take an example problem and see how we can do a principal component analysis using support vector decomposition technique. Okay. So let's take the main steps and we'll see how do we implement computationally the principal component analysis. So consider any data matrix X, which contains M different sample represented in each of the row. And this is something that we have talked previously. Maybe this is the M number of pictures that you have for each faces and so on. And you want to reduce the dimensionality. Why? Because N, the number of uh, columns that you have is essentially very, very high. So you want to represent that probably as a low dimensional and they might, all the you know, pixel information might not be very important. So if you reduce the dimensionality, you can do a lot better. And that's why probably we want to take X and hopefully represent that in a smaller dimension if possible. Okay, so again, what is this? These are measurement from single experiment. This could be images or data that you're capturing from multiple different sensors and so on. Okay, now single element could be anything like a person's image or it could be you know data related to investor finance and so on depending upon what you're capturing your data matrix will be representing different things that is important to you okay so what we are doing is in uh, pca we have essentially four main step the first step is computing mean row given an x what you do is you compute the mean row okay and what this mean row is is basically it is computed for all the rows and you do derive this x mean which is given by this mean equation that you have here and then what you do is you essentially use this information and you create a mean matrix okay so before we go to the mean matrix let's me quickly allude how this x mean could be computed given an x matrix that you have so let's say we have this x matrix right here what we do is what we take this X matrix, right? And we take the column, the, you know, the first column that we have, right? This, all the entries that we have, we add all of that entry, okay? And we divide that by M. And we will get this first entry, okay? Similarly, we take the second column that we have there, add them up, so we will add all the entries there and divide that by M. And then that's what we will get the second row. Similarly, I will take the last one, right? This is the nth row. So here we will add all the entries, okay? And divide that by M, and then I will get a nth element of vector. So we will keep this vector, right? And this vector is essentially the mean row vector that we are computing. So this will become a mean row vector, and that's how the computation of the mean row is coming into the picture when we are you know, doing the mean row calculations here. So again, when we say that we are computing mean row, what is mean row? This is what we illustrated just now, how to compute the mean row. So this is what we are computing. So this will be a vector, right? 
Now what we can do is from that vector, we can create a mean matrix, okay? And what is this mean matrix, right? We take x mean matrix, the x small x mean is a vector, capital X bar is essentially a matrix. Essentially, if you take m, you know, m number of ones and multiply that with the mean vector that we have, you will be essentially replicating x, x mean vector m number of times. So it will be first, second, it's same replica of the same thing will be there and essentially it will be repeated m number of times and that will be the x, capital X bar or the mean matrix that we are going to be computing. So once we have computed this mean matrix, right, what we do is we move on to the second step and what we do is we do the mean subtraction. So whatever is the data matrix, we subtract the mean matrix from that data, okay. Now, what is this operation? So what we did is we had x, right? And after computing the x small x bar, we got this uh, capital X bar, which is the mean matrix. We subtract the mean matrix from the original matrix x, okay? So subtraction of two matrices results in a new matrix called B, okay? And this is essentially the step two, right? And this is essentially what is known as mean centering of data in a PCA, domain and so on, right? And this is what we mean. Subtracting the mean value brings the entire distribution of data of the origin. And remember, when we showed the diagram, I showed, I taught, uh, told you that the location of the U and V was at the mean centered point of the data. And that's, you know, the algorithmic way of doing this. B, computing B is essentially correlating with that geometrical aspect that I mentioned previously. Okay. Okay. Now you move on to the second, step three, the third step of the principal component analysis, where we compute the covariance of the mean centered data. So we take this B matrix and we compute the covariance of that. And how do we do that? We compute a matrix C, which is equivalent to the product of B transpose multiplied by B itself. Okay, so you take this B, you take the B transpose and then you have a matrix, right? You take that matrix and multiply that by B itself, that will give you a C. So C is a product of two matrices, B transpose and B, okay? And that's how we get the covariance matrix that is there, okay? And now here the correlationship between the samples are what this C computes is essentially computing the correlationship between different samples and so on, okay? And this entry of covariance matrix C is the inner product of two rows of the data matrix X that we have. Okay. So that's the step three that we have. And then once we have done the step three, what we do is we do the eigenvalue decomposition of the covariance matrix. So we basically solve the eigenvalue problem for the matrix C, okay? So the covariance matrix is now represented into eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and that is what is used for principal component analysis, okay? So various te techniques are available. You can do a eigen decomposition, or you can also use the support vector decomposition. So let's see two different methods how we can use, you know, this computation of eigenvalue decomposition using one approach, a simple, simple approach, and the second approach that we'll take is we will decompose that using support vector decomposition or using SVD going forward, okay? So the principal component that you have for C, right, that will be represented as V times B times V and so on, right? So the matrix, the principal component T will be represented as B multiplied by V that we have, okay? Now, this V are essentially the eigenvectors that we get out of solving the eigenvalue problem for the covariance matrix that we have. So once we get that, you know, the eigenvalue vectors, we use that vectors and we multiply those vectors with B and that gives us a decomposition or Prinko component decomposition. So if you recall, when we are doing the transformation, right, you know, from X1 and X2 to uh, U and V space, in that case, we are basically, you know, think about the T is the transformation matrix that allows you to map that from X1, X2 space to U1, U and V space that we have.